Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today on episode 13, we'll be looking at a data set of mushroom data and trying to classify whether they are safe to eat or deadly poison. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's load in our data to start. First I'll import my usual libraries, numpy and pandas, and we'll get matplotlib as well. And we will just let's just load in our data just to see what we're looking at first. Uh, so pandas.readcsv, and we're going to get the uh, the link from right over here. Copy file path. Boom. And now we just let's just take a look at that. We can see okay. So we have 23 different columns. The first column is the label column. So we have 22 features total. But we can see that all of the data is in um, text label fashion, but not numeric labels. So we're going to have to convert those using sklearns uh, label encoder. Preprocessing, import label encoder. Okay. And we're also going to want to scale our data uh, so that uh, all the values have unit variance, all the features have unit variance. So from sklearn.preprocessing, import standard scalar. And uh, a few more utilities we'll need is sklearns, oops, uh, train test split. Just makes splitting the data very easily. And then uh, we're going to use three models on this data. Uh, we'll use a logistic regression classifier, a support vector machine classifier, and a neural network. We'll use sklearns MLP classifier. So I'll just get all three of those. First, our logistic regression. Then uh, SVM import SVC and skidlearn.neural network import MLP classifier. Okay. And I think um, we'll also get Seaborn so we can get a nice heat map of our data. Okay, so now we have all our stuff. Let's get into it. All right, why don't I just put a mark down here for uh, getting started? Okay. Now, after that, we're going to pre-process our data. So, like I said, we're going to encode all of these labels into a numerical format so that we can feed it into our models, and then we're going to scale it down to have unit variance so that all the values take upon take a uh, similar ranges. So um, yeah, let's let's put a mark down here for pre-processing, and then we're gonna go and start encoding our label data. So mappings, I'm going to make this an empty list, and basically I'm just going to fill that with all of the dictionaries for each feature. We're going to convert every every unique value in a given feature uh, to be uh, its own numeric label, and then we're gonna create a dictionary that maps those numeric labels to the text labels. So uh, to do that, first we're going to need our encoder, which is just a label encoder object. And then for each column J, I'll call it column actually, for a column in uh, the range of data.columns, so basically just for each column, uh, we're going to, okay, we're going to set the column equal to its newly encoded version. So data.columns sub column. This will return a, uh, if, you, if you just take a look, data.columns looks like it's, it's a, uh, a list of all the column names. So we this will give us a column name for the, the given column. And then we're going to take the slice of that data set, of the, the total data set, for, the, for that given column name. So we're going to set that equal. So what's basically we're saying we're going to set the whole column equal to encoder dot fit transform the old the old data. So we're going to take the column, fit it to the encoder, transform it, and then return it to uh, the the uh, original column to update those values to make them numeric labels. And then we're going to um, append to our our empty list a 
a, li a dictionary of mappings for that specific column. So we'll call it mappings dict, and that's going to be a dictionary mapping an index to a label for every index and label in uh, encoder has a uh, attribute called classes underscore which is basically a list of all the classes in order of their mappings so if we enumerate that we can get a dictionary of the mappings and then we're just going to append that mappings dict onto our mappings list okay now if we run that we should look our data will now be fully numeric and our mappings will be a list of uh, of 22 or actually 23 different dictionaries in which each dictionary provides the mappings for every unique value in that column to its corresponding numeric value so you can see for example in the cap shape which is uh, um, it has the index 1 for a column has uh, possibly up to five unique values. Each one has been given a value from 0 to 5 and if you look down this is the one index mapping and you can see uh, each original unique value has been mapped to a corresponding number from 0 to 5 and that will be the case for all of them. So mappings is just a convenient way for us to see um, if we ever need to go back and wonder like okay what's a 7 for stock color above ring uh, we can just look in at the um, what we'll index at that uh, column and then we'll get the mapping for it. I'm not sure which of these it is. Okay so now let's split our data between X and Y. So our Y is going to be the class column right this is what we're trying to predict whether or not it's poisonous or deadly and if we if we actually look at this we can see poisonous is equal to one and edible is equal to zero uh, sorry I said poisonous or deadly I meant poisonous or safe or edible in this case so this means it's poisonous this means it's not so this is the guy we're trying to predict so we'll say y equals data sub uh, class and then our x will just be everything except that so data dot drop class along the uh, column axis. Run that. You can see now y should be a um, it's going to be a vector of our classifications ones and zeros, one being for poisonous, zero being for safe, and x will be our original data set except without the class. Okay, so now let's uh, scale our x because we don't really need to scale the class as this is just the, the, um, the prediction, right? One or zero but we want to scale all the rest of the data which is our x to be to have unit variance so that all the values take upon uh, similar ranges so to do that we'll create a scalar object with the um, standard scalar that we imported from sklearn and then we're going to say x is equal to scalar.fittransform x so that the, the scalar will be fit to the data and then it will transform the data oh put x in there it will transform X back into this new scaled version of it. And now um, we're going to just turn it back into a data frame. Since the fit transform function returns a NumPy array, it'll just be easier to see what we're dealing with if we make it a pandas data frame again. And we'll set the columns for that data frame equal to the old x.columns values. So now if we take a look at X, you can see it's like it was before. Everything except the class uh, column, except now all the values take upon similar ranges within each feature. Okay, so now we're ready to, okay, one more step actually, let's split our data with the train test split uh, function. So x train x test, this will give us four different uh, slices of our data set, y train y test is equal to train test split x Wow, <laughs> Y and we'll specify the train size to be 80% since we have a decent size, 8,000 examples. So uh, this this uh, test the test uh, set will be large enough to give us accurate predictions. I mean accurate accuracy. 
Okay, so now let's run that and let's create, let's do our model selection. Okay, so now we're going to create three models. One logistic regression, logistic regression. One uh, SVM model, which is a support vector machine. And we'll specify the uh, regularization const, uh, regularization hyperparameter to be 1.0. And the kernel will be a radial basis function kernel, RBF. And neural network model, this will be our MLP classifier. And we'll specify the hidden layer sizes. Since we have a good number of features, uh, we'll give it a pretty good uh, number of nodes, 128, 128, so two hidden layers, each with 128 nodes. And let's just run that. And now we'll train our models. So uh, before we train them, before we get a uh, reading of the accuracy, it's a good idea to check if we have imbalanced data. So what I mean by that is how many uh, positive examples do we have compared to how many negative examples? Because if we have a really small number of positive examples, for example, accuracy won't be a very good metric to use on our, on our model. Because uh, let's, say we had, let's say we had 99 positives and one negative. If, we've, if we uh, guessed positive 100% of the time, we would have 99% accuracy. Because the only one we get wrong is the one negative example. So let's take a look at how many positives to negatives we have. If we take the numpy.sum of y, you can realize y is just an array of zeros and ones. So if we sum it up, it'll just be the number of positive examples. And if we divide that by the length of y, which is the total number of examples, we should get the percentage of examples which are positive. And it comes out to 48%. So this, is, this means our data is quite balanced. There's 48% positive, 52% negative. That's, that's very good. We can use accuracy as our, as our metric here. So let's uh, train all three models. Uh, we're going to have our log model, logistic model. Uh, we'll be, wait one second. We've got to fit it, actually. Dot fit, x train, y train. And then we'll just do the same thing for all the others. So just copy that. And then this will be SVM model, and this will be neural network model. OK, train them. And now we're going to print out their corresponding accuracies. So print, and we'll use an f-string, uh, logistic regression, and log model dot score. So we're going to get the accuracy value for running the uh, predictions for x-test against y-test as our, so this will be our predictive values sorry, it'll take these, create predictive values uh, with the model, and then compare them to y-test to give us our accuracy. And so we'll do the same thing just with the other two models. So this will be support vector machine, and this will be neural network. And then this will just be NN and SVM. Okay, and just to make it nicer, we'll just put little dashes here so we can match them up. Okay. And wow, let's just look at that. That's 100% accuracy uh, for the SVM and the neural network, and 95% accuracy for the logistic regression. So let's just take a look how many ex uh, examples are in our test set. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do one more. These, visualization. And before I, uh, let, let's just see, X test dot shape. Let's see. So there's 1600 examples and it got every single one right. So <clears throat> what that means is this is a very clean data set. This is a great data set in which the features absolutely um, are, you know, they're amazing predictors of the classes. So um, I'm interested to see, are, is there any one feature that has a tremendous predicting power over the classification. So let's do a heat map. So we'll get the correlation matrix uh, 
of our original data, which if we look at it, is just going to be, um, it will still have the class, right? <clears throat> and it, nothing has been scaled yet, but everything is in numeric uh, values. So we'll be able to get the correlation. Okay, so correlation uh, equals data dot core. And we're just going to use the Seaborn's heat map on the correlation matrix. And wow, all right. So this is very interesting. Uh, here's our class, right? But it looks like, you know, there's a uh, remarkable. There's no one that's really dominating, all right? Because you can see this this uh, lowest uh, most negative correlation value is not even negative one. So there's nothing that's incredibly correlated here. That means that there is no one feature that's predicting at 100% accuracy. It's a combination of all of them that are working together to give, these, give us these amazing predictions. So this is really a remarkable data set. <sighs> all right. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, leave a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.